A few years ago, I went on vacation to visit my best friend uh, who lives in Baltimore, Maryland. And I've been to Baltimore a number of times and we have together experienced so many of the um, typical touristy spots, you know, the, uh, the Inner Harbor, the Aquarium, uh, the Hard Rock Cafe, a lot of the things that you do when you're a tourist in Baltimore. And so at this particular visit, we decided we were going to share some experiences at some lesser known, but still pretty exciting things that both of us would enjoy. Um, so we went to the American Visionary Art Museum. We went to the Paper Moon Diner, which is a very creative uh, space where you can eat and look at all the weird decorations around you. Um, but by far, one of my favorite spots that we visited was the Peabody Library. And what I love about the library, the Peabody Library in Baltimore, is that when you walk in, you almost feel like you're being transported back into older days. Uh, everything looks very elegant. Everything looks um, just so handcrafted in a unique old world style. And it was wonderful looking through all these ancient books. And the Peabody Library is um, a research library for the John Hopkins uh, University there. And as we were looking through this library that was just so exquisite and beautiful and just captivating, the other thing that captivated me was the actual books that were in the library. And there was a section that was, uh, you know, roped off that you couldn't go to, um, and it held some of the, the older, older manuscripts. And I really wanted to try to be sneaky and get back behind there and, and take a look at some of them. But I mean, there was plenty to experience, even on the main floor, um, flipping through books, looking through an old card catalog, you guys. And uh, maybe I'm uh, putting an age date on myself, but one of my favorite things to do as a kid in the public school library um, was to dig through the card catalog and learn how to find the book that I was looking for. Um, and I was able to do that and it was laid out in such a unique fashion. And I remember flipping through these old pages, you know, being very gentle because I don't know how long they've been here. Um, and some of them are written in uh, older texts and languages and I didn't want to, you know, destroy anything. And so flipping through it, I was like, I could probably spend a good half a day just immersing myself in these books before you know i got hungry and had to go like get something to eat but then maybe i'd come back you know because it's a library and i absolutely love libraries um i love to read i i mean i love reading books in general but if we're getting really specific uh some of my favorite authors are actually poets and if i had a bookshelf big enough for all the poetry books that i wanted in the world um it would probably take over my whole house um, but actually, one of my favorite things to do is to go to the library and sit and read poetry books, um, you know, from newer authors and older authors and um, just kind of put myself into their headspace and discover how their words resonate with what I'm feeling or things that I've experienced. And I actually, this is just a small portion um, of what I can hold comfortably, uh, but this is just a small portion of some of the uh, poetry books that um, I keep in the house. And, you know, it's this ever-growing collection because I find that even if I read a poem today and it doesn't resonate, that I can revisit that book maybe in a month and I am sure um, to find something in there that I just, I'm with them. I feel it. I understand it. I am enveloped in that. And I mean, Again, I love to read in general, but poetry just enthralls me. And that's why I'm really excited for this series that we're doing called Poetry in Motion, because it's all about the books of poetry in the Bible. And through this series, we're gonna to get to hear from a variety of communicators and hear some great perspectives on the different books of poetry that are found in the Bible. And today I'm gonna to kick it off by talking about the book of Psalms. 
Um, that's that part in the Bible that is like r almost right in the center. Um, it's probably, if you're a beginner reading the Bible, it's probably one of the easier books to tackle in the Bible. Um, I highly recommend you read a Psalm a day. Um, if you're just getting into reading the Bible or if you want to kind of switch things up, um, even if you want to throughout this series, um, kind of make it a goal to read through a Psalm a day. Um, that would be a good thing to do, but I am going to be talking about the book of Psalms today. And because I'm talking about the book of Psalms today, and I think there's a lot to um, kind of discuss together, I want to open us up in prayer uh, based on a psalm. So if you will, let's pray. God, let your word be a lamp that guides our steps and a light that shows the path that we should take. Inspire us and challenge us. Remind us and equip us for every aspect of our life that we may live life to the fullest and bring love and light to everyone around us. In your name we pray. Amen. It is my ongoing prayer that throughout this series you would be willing to do some digging with us. Um, for some of you, and like me, poetry is beautiful and it's amazing and it's so creative. Um, but admittedly, for others, it might feel like nails on a chalkboard. Um, or maybe poetry um, and, and finding the poetic scriptures in the Bible is kind of like, um, you know, pulling that old worn out bike out of the garage that's been hiding in there and getting back on and trying to ride it again. Um, you know, whatever that looks like for you, I want to challenge you to lean into the tension and potential awkwardness as we talk more about poetry, we talk more about our feelings, we talk more about sitting in our thoughts, about sitting in our feelings as a way to move forward um, and leaning into the scriptures that help us take those steps forward. Um, I really want to invite you to embrace the idea that God gave us feelings um, to be felt and to be expressed through written and spoken words. Um, we're not going to ask you to write poetry, but if you want to, you sure can. Um, I'm just hoping that through um, today's message and through this series that you're able to kind of turn the gem a little bit and look at God through a more um, creative, poetic um, aspect and really embrace that part of who he is in your own life. Uh, speaking of spoken words, I will never forget the first time I attended a Christian conference, uh, and it was when I was a young adult. Um, I was in the Dallas area um, with our church group, and it was a conference that was just for people in their like 20-somethings. Um, and I heard this incredible woman named Amina Brown uh, get up on stage, and she shared this spoken word poetry on the stage, and it was just, oh my gosh, like a light flipped on and just kind of made my whole soul sing. Um, you know, she was bold, she was powerful, she was passionate. Um, her spoken word was life-changing for me. Hearing Amina stand boldly on that stage and speak words from scripture that inspired commentary that she discovered through it took my love for poetry to the next level. Um, when she left the stage, I immediately went searching for the scriptures that she referenced and I highlighted them in my Bible. Um, that's how much it just impacted me. And one passage of scripture that I've held on to tightly uh, is actually from the book of Psalms. And it says this, But then I recall all you have done, O Lord. I remember your wonderful deeds of long ago. They are constantly in my thoughts. I cannot stop thinking about your mighty works. O oh God, your ways are holy. Is there any God as mighty as you? You are the God of great wonders. You demonstrate your awesome power among the nations. By your strong arm, you redeem your people, the descendants of Jacob and Joseph. It became a song, like an anthem and a battle cry for me. It just has always been my favorite psalm. And, you know, we actually asked this past week on our social media platforms, 
uh, what is your favorite psalm and why. And maybe you didn't get a chance to answer it or you want to share it again, but I would love to hear from you this morning. So I'm going to give you a couple minutes um, just to share in the comments. And I just want to know, what is your favorite psalm? If you have one, what is your favorite psalm and why is it your favorite? One of the answers we got from social media was from a follower named Anthony, and he shared that his favorite psalm uh, is Psalm 13, because as a young gay Christian, Anthony felt that God was hiding, and this psalm resonated with those feelings. And whether you're part of the LGBTQ plus community or not, it's fair to say that at some point you've sat at that same table. Um, wondering where is God in the middle of this? Why is God hiding from me? Why can't I see or feel or, you know, even acknowledge that God is with me right now? And again, we're all connected through the things that we feel, our lived experiences and our desire to feel like we are loved and like we belong. And the power of the faith community and the power of combining that with um, scriptures and the and the power of psalms is that you know we can sit at that table together and and you know patiently wait and listen as God reminds us that He has not forgotten us. You know we, He is not hiding. He is not ashamed. We are not too much. He does redeem. He is good. He will restore our joy and our peace. He has for Anthony and for so many others who have felt that same way. And we can trust in his unfailing love to meet us in the middle of the chaos or the silence each and every time. You know, I think it's incredible that we can show up at any point in our walk of life and find our hearts cry in the book of Psalms. Uh, even though they were written so long ago by such a variety of authors, they can still be so meaningful to us today. Did you know that some of the most widely recognized phrases and sentences from the Bible actually come to us from the book of Psalms? The 150 poems in the book of Psalms was originally referred to in Hebrew as Tehillim, represents a large range of human voices, the sounds of lament and of thanksgiving to God, of individuals celebrating God's grace, or pleading with God to bring rescue and redemption. And although it was written uh, as a recounting of Israel's history and a collection of God's promises, we get to lean into those promises in our present day. And the Psalms were also written as a kind of new Torah to teach God's people the lifelong practice of prayer. And each of the five books that make up the Psalms reflects a distinct historical and spiritual period of Israel's history. But yet those words through the ages bring about some of the most heartfelt, passionate prayers and songs that spark light and life when we read, recite, and pray through the Psalms. They teach us to lean into the tension of both pain and hope. 
I want to know from you here in the comments, if you feel comfortable sharing, where do you find your hope or your pain in the Psalms today? Do you need to remember God's goodness? Well, Psalm 145 is here for you today. Or do you need to lay your burdens down? Lean into Psalm 55. Are you overwhelmed by the pain and suffering in the world? Let Psalm 91 be your song today. Do you need a reminder to trust God? Take a look at Psalm 37, two through three a few times today. Are you facing despair and hopelessness? Come up for air and reflect on Psalm 40, verse one through two. As you read through the Psalms, be willing to get real, get vulnerable, and ask yourself these questions. Number one, what stands out to you in this particular passage of scripture? Number two, do you give yourself the freedom to express all your deepest emotions and thoughts to God? If not, what holds you back? In this season of life where our faith can seem like it's shattered against the rocks or pulled against the grain or a mere light at the end of a long dark tunnel, I want to leave you with this spoken word poem from Amina Brown. This poem is featured in Sarah Bessie's book, A Rhythm of Prayer, um, and it is called, She Said, How Do You Know When You Are Hearing From God? I hope that you're blessed by her words. I hope that um, the things I've shared today have been meaningful to you. I hope that throughout the week you're able to find solace and peace um, and joy and delight through the scriptures. Um, and just know that you're not alone, that if you're not finding that joy, if you're not finding that peace, um, if you are still wrestling, there is plenty of room at the table for you. And we as a community will sit with you in that. Um, and I just, you know, pray blessings over you today. Um, and I hope that this spoken word um, empowers you um, and brings you a sense of hope and peace today. Thanks for sharing your time with me. She said, how do you know when you're hearing from God? I didn't know how to explain. It is to explain the butter grit of cornbread to a mouth that just discovered it has a tongue. The sound of jazz to ears that only ever thought they'd be lobes of flesh. The sight of sunsets to a blinded eye that an instant can see to fail. At the ability to describe how the scent of baked bread can make the mind recall a memory. Every detail of a house, a room, a conversation. Like explaining to a newborn baby, this is what it feels like to be held. My words never felt so small, so useless, so incapable. I wanted to tell her. Put your hand in the center of your chest. Feel the rhythm there. I wanted to tell her you will find the holy text in so many places. On crinkly pages of scripture, in a dusty hymnal, in the crease of a grandmother's smile, the way she clasps her hands and prays familiar, as if to dignitary and friend, the way she sings a simple song from her spirit turns her porch into a cathedral. I learned from my great grandmother how to pray, how to talk to God, how to listen watching her and the other silver-haired church mothers gather in her living room. See, they pray living room prayers because you don't have to be inside the four walls of a church to cry out to the God who made you. And despite what the law say, or what our human flaws say, God's ears don't play favorites. God's ears don't assess bank accounts or social status for they attune themselves to the story. Your tears or your fears are telling God's ears are here for the babies, for the dreamers, for the immigrant and the refugee, for the orphan and the widow, for the depressed and the lonely, for the oppressed, for those about to make a mess or caught in the middle of cleaning one up. See, dirt don't scare God's ears. God is a gardener. God knows full well. It takes rain and sun and soil to make things grow. I wanted to tell her, if you want to experience God, you have to be willing to experience what's holy in the places so many people don't even deem to be sacred that sometimes God sits next to you on a bar stool spilling truth to you like too many beers that God knows full well the dance we do and we love ourselves so little that just about anyone will do that God cares about the moments we find ourselves on the edge of a cliff, on the edge of sanity, on the edge of society, I wanted to tell her how God is always waiting, lingering after the doors close and the phone doesn't ring and we are finally alone, how God is always saying, I love you. I'm here. Don't go. Stay.
today, please, how God is always pleading with us to trust, to love, to listen, how God's voice is all thunder and whisper and bass lines and grace. Sometimes when I pray, I think about her, how the voice of God was lingering in her very question, how just like so many of us, like you, like me, like her, still doubting, still searching, still questioning. I know I don't have all the answers. I know I never will. Maybe the best thing I can do is put my hand in the center of my chest, feel the rhythm there, turn down the noise in our minds and our lives and whisper, God, whatever you want to say, I'm here. I'm listening. Oh, thank you so much, Amanda, for that message today, for um, talking about your perspective on the Psalms, and then for sharing that beautiful spoken word by Amina Brown. Uh, The book Amanda referenced, uh, The Rhythm of Prayer, is so fantastic, and I would highly recommend it to everyone. And um, you know, I love too the question that Amanda posed for us about: Are do we bring? Do we bring, do we feel the freedom to be able to bring the fullness of ourselves before God? And I think that's something that people have been wrestling with forever. Um, I think we far too often in the church culture that we live in, uh, so many of us carry this idea that there's certain things that are appropriate and certain things that are inappropriate when it comes to how we approach God. And I just think... Um, all we have to do is read the Psalms and that kind of demolishes that whole mindset um, that there, and I love how Amina Brown said in her poem that God is a gardener, that, that God is familiar with dirt and with watering and with getting, you know, God's hands into the dirt and the mess. That doesn't scare God. That doesn't deter God from our lives and that we can bring the fullness of ourselves Uh, no matter how messy we think things are. And I think that's one really beautiful thing that we can learn from the Psalms that, you know, I think um, I just feel so validated too when I read the Psalms, like all of my frustrations and my anger and my lament and my doubt and my unbelief and, um, you know, ways that I don't understand where God is or how God is working when I look out in the world and I see the injustice around and I think, God, where are you? And I love that we can turn to the Psalms and see that question posed over and over again, uh, where whether it's David or whoever the author uh, is of the different Psalms, how that question, where are you, God, is posed so often. And so it's, it's comforting to me to be able to be honest about that and acknowledge that, that there are times when God feels very far away and that that is a completely human response for us to feel frustrated, to feel doubt, to feel unbelief, to not know, you know, how God is working and to be unsure of where we fit into all of it. And so, um, yeah, just thank you so much, Amanda, for sharing those truths, sharing your perspective, for giving us that beautiful Um, you know, for sharing Amina Brown's spoken word, just the way that that can speak to us and kind of help us to be in tune with our emotions and our feelings. And so I know I'm going to carry that with me this week. So um, I hope, oh, Dan has something that he wants to say. (laughs) Sorry. Sorry. (laughs) Hey, everybody. Uh, You know, since I'm co-founding pastor, I think I can get to jump on with everyone. Hi. So I just figured I'd jump on here real quick. (laughs) And interrupt her and let you guys know, one, today is Pastor Appreciation Sunday. Oh, Lord. So, I, and I know Kelly wanted to honor Pastor Amanda, Pastor Sabrina, but I also wanted to take a moment to honor Pastor Kelly oh, here as well. Geez. So in the chat, just let's give a little shout out to all of our <laughs> pastors on staff. And here's what I would say, in, in, in all seriousness, I and I get to steal this Right here, she can just scoot over. Oh, he's just pushing but for real, me out of the screen. But for real, this is, I know how challenging this season has been, pastoring in general has been, and we just wanted to take a moment to honor 
you and all of our pastors. So thank you guys so much. And here's the deal. I can remember this when any time the church would do something for Kelly and I. And the thing that meant the most to me was going home afterwards if people wrote cards and notes of appreciation saying thank you and that sort of stuff. Just knowing there's a lot of work that happens behind the scenes that nobody sees, that Kelly is doing, that Amanda is doing, that Sabrina is doing. And it can many times, though, you're doing it for the kingdom of God and you're not doing it for applause or thanks. When you do realize that it makes an impact and it makes a difference, that really helps you kind of keep going. And there were there were years that sometimes getting those cards would just charge me up for another year. So if you can, just shoot them a note or an email or a text message. It doesn't have to be anything fancy, but just let them know that you appreciate them and that would be great. So that's all I've got. I'm leaving now. Um, good to see all of you. <laughs> and I'm gonna kick it back to the real pastor. Okay, I'm out. Well, that was really nice. Thank you. And I feel a little, I, I feel awkward at the moment, but it's fine. <laughs> oh, man, you really, like, bumped me out of the well, shot, you man. know, like, I, I, you know I, had to, I had to make sure to get my moment. I, I, don't, I don't get this very much, so i got to make the most of it when I do. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, man. Well, thank you. That was very sweet. And, yes, to Pastor Amanda and Pastor Sabrina, um... Just you are so loved and appreciated and really just to all of you, like, I just can't, I, there is no other group of people that I would want to pastor. I mean, I just feel so honored um, to get to be a part of what we are all creating together here at Icon. Um, it's beautiful. It's not super clean or professional and it's messy and we don't most of the time we don't know what we're doing let's just be honest about that <laughs> but um i just i'm so grateful for the community that we have here um for what we're creating and building together um i just i think that it's really beautiful and i think there are really incredible days ahead for us so love you all very much and now I feel like I don't know how to wrap things up because I, I don't, I don't know. Dan's listen, like, okay, I'm out. Now yeah. you have hey, to listen. figure out That's, This is up to you now. It's all you. <laughs> well, listen, I hope you all have a fantastic week. Uh, for those of you that have elementary age kids, at 11 o'clock we have our eKids Zoom um, connect time. So go ahead and log on for that uh, with all your elementary age kids to, to have some a chance to hang out with Pastor Amanda and to build community with one another. Um, and then we'll be back next week uh, with Craig Johnson actually is going to be preaching next week. Um, our next message in our Poetry in Motion series. Oh, sorry, oh. buddy. My, my bad. No, wrong wrong effect, buddy. Oh, here, here we go. So Hold mean. on. Hold. He's probably not even watching today. There you go. <laughs> See, we're excited for you, bud. So we're just super pumped about this series to really dive more into scripture and figure out some ways that we can bring out some truth and some helpful things for us in our life. So I love you all so much. I hope you have a fantastic week and we will see you back here next Sunday.